Welcome back to the Cloth Diaper Podcast. My name is Bailey and I am a cloth diaper addict. I love everything cloth diapering and I also love everything related to the environment. Today we're going to talk about the study that came out of France that's talking about how there are or could be chemicals in your disposable diapers which if you are a cloth diaper mama, parent, is probably not a surprise. We all have inklings in our gut that say disposable diapering doesn't feel safe, but we don't know anything. And I am gonna, did a little bit of research over this past weekend to kind of talk about the basics. And I would love to have a conversation down in the comments with you about this, anything that you know, bring it to the table and let's talk. And if I say something wrong, call me out on it. I totally appreciate that. My background is in environmental studies, so I have an arts degree in understanding environmental relationships and how that impacts the earth. I also have, I have a few other degrees, but they're not really <laughs> useful. So that's who I am. If you I want to start this conversation off by prefacing that we don't know anything about disposable diapers, and that is scary. So here in North America, especially in the United States, the disposable diaper company has a pretty strong stro has a pretty stronghold on the information that they release and can't release. So if we look at a cloth diaper, for example, we Cloth diapers in the United States have to go through CPSI testing. It has to test for lead and in Canada it has to be proved flammable or something as well. So there are testing processes to know what's in your cloth diaper and very transparent brands will be quite open and honest with you about what's in their diaper. But disposable diaper companies don't really have to tell you anything. And what we know about the ingredients in a disposable diaper is pretty much minimal. They often lump things together under one category like fragrances and they often don't tell anybody anything. <laughs> and from a little bit of snooping around the internet, it's pretty much impossible to find out anything about disposable diaper manufacturing, what goes into a disposable diaper, what all the ingredients even are and what that means. And so that is scary. And to me is a huge red flag about this product. Like, and last year when Jen Labbit from Bum Genius kind of put together a campaign called hashtag I get to know, which has pretty much disappeared. I wonder why, uh, nobody talked about it. And that is like, what? Nobody talked about it because I feel that disposable diaper companies have a huge stronghold. So we should care about this study because we don't know what's in a disposable diaper. And so it's hard to even claim or know what could be lurking in those diapers. So that's why we should care. At the same rate, this study might not be relevant because studies coming out of South Korea and Switzerland in the last couple years suggested that there weren't actually chemicals in, cloth di in disposable diapers that were impactful. The study of South Korea suggested that they were present but they were in such low levels that they would not impact health and the Swiss study said they do not contain any substances or chemicals that may pose a health risk my understanding and reading of these studies suggested that they were present, but they felt like they weren't relevant. So this study is interesting because it's saying they are present and they could potentially have a risk. So, and disposable diaper brands are represented at an international level by an uh, organization called EDANA, and it's the International Association for Non-Wovens. And they basically claim that disposable diapers are safe, but they don't actually provide any statistics or long-term studies that say they are. There's just a general consensus, well, we've been using these for 50 years, they must be safe, there hasn't been any potential health outcomes. But part of the problem is that the chemicals that they've discovered in disposable diapers are present everywhere in the environment. There are other ways that you can come in contact with these things as well. These tend to be chemicals that have a long-term, not a short-term impact. So some of these, that means that these chemicals are most likely related to long-term things such as infertility versus short-term things such as diaper rashes. And when I was on Adana's, Edina, Adana's website, they talked about how disposable diapers really combated diaper dermis, dermatitis. 
And that is the reason why disposable diapers are awesome because less people were having rashes. But the interesting thing is if you're in the mom space, in the mom community, you actually know that most of your disposable diaper friends use a ton of rash cream. Most of your disposable diaper friends use like seriously high strength rash cream and yeah, like it's different. Plus washing cloth diapers today versus 60 years ago is an entirely different beast. We now have different practices and we do things differently and we have washing machines and detergents that actually clean diapers and uh, don't lead to rashes. That was the only evidence on their website that I could find on um, why disposable diapers were the better option is because from a physician's point of view they saw patients with less rashes. And that was it. That's the only information I can find on their website. If you can find more information about why there's a long-term benefit to disposable diapers, let me know. 4% adhesive, 4% other, and 1% elastic. And fluff pulp is, it's like, um, pulp from trees and stuff. Disposable diaper is a well-kept secret. It's a manufacturer trade secret, and they don't share their ingredients because that's how you could get it you could lose your spot hold in the industry. We see the same thing with cloth diapering about PUL and TPU. So what makes a cloth diaper waterproof is a chemical layering on the fabric and that's known as PUL or TPU. And for the most part, that's a well-guarded secret as well because what combination of chemicals they put on it depends on the effect on the material. The study, talked about chemicals and for the most part a lot of the news resources just said chemicals and they threw around the big name glyphosate which is a weed killer and that's about it and actually glyphosate is probably one of the chemicals that we should be least concerned about in the cloth diaper because it was only found in about 10 of the brands I think is what the article said and it wasn't found in levels that are considered harmful for infant health. Mind you, glyphosate is being abandoned by a lot of countries and regions around the world as a weed killer because it is suspected to be linked to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma as well as have cancer causing risks. It's not really like a good thing. However, it is one of the world's most used fertilizers and, or not fertilizers, weed killers. And one of the reasons it's used is because it's non-selective and you just toss it over a crop and it kills everything. So farmers will use it before the crop sprouts to kill off all the weeds. And it is being abandoned and a jury in the United States did find Monsanto guilty for not properly disclosing the potential health impacts when a um, large lawns keeper became very ill. So it is very concerning that there is glyphosate in the diaper, but I think that's used as like the emotional catch-all because people know about glyphosate and there's always those like things, it's in our cereal. Um, and one of the reasons that it is everywhere is because it's frequently used and it does live in the environment for a long time. But I think we should be also concerned about these other chemicals. So I did some research and I'm re re most of my facts are coming from the CDC or the government of Canada's uh, website about these toxins and all of those links are going to be in my blog post at clothtyperpodcast.com and you can also read about this down below. I'm going to toss the names of the chemicals up on the screen. I'm not a scientist. I'm just sharing with you what I know as from my own personal research. So if you know more, again, please tell me. There are five or six chemicals that were found in the diapers in levels that might potentially impact infant health. That means that if these diapers were used reasonably, which is about 4,000 changes, they quoted. So the first one is a fragrance, and that is butylphenol methylpropionol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, guys. <laughs> and this is known for its strong floral scent. It's commonly also found in laundry powders, and there seems to be a general concern about this product's potential health impacts, but I couldn't really find anything else Besides that statement, they just assume, they think this could be impacting our health. The next one was another fragrance known as hydrocyphosyl 3 cyclohexene 
carboxaldehyde. Man, why can't they come up with easier names? And this fragrance is a known allergen and it frequently causes dermatitis in a small percentage of the population. And that was like, I think one to 3% is what some of the statistics said. So polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. And this is known as a PHS. A PHS, PAH is a substance left over after the incomplete burning of coal, oil, garbage, or any other organic material. And the CDC released a report suggesting that it's harmful to your health, especially when you're breathing it in. Studies in animals have suggested that they have difficulty reproducing after exposure to PHS. So um, the study suggested that mice, if I was exposed, if I was a mouse, <laughs> and I was exposed to PHS, I might have difficulties reproducing and my children might have difficulties reproducing. Um, for people who are, it's also linked to a decline in immunity and there was mixed opinions from my perspective on the internet research about whether or not that was just whether you breathed it in or whether you had exposure to it through your skin. The next one was a PCB. Actually, the next two are PCBs. And PCBs are a commercial, commercially produced chemical that's actually kind of been banned and is no longer in use. It was stopped in 1977 because this product builds up into the environment, has a really long half-life, and it impacts human health. And I'm not really sure why they're finding PCBs in disposable diapers in 2014. Part of that, I wonder, is the environmental legacy of PCBs. If you're cutting down trees and using trees that have been exposed to high rates of toxins at one point or another in their lifespan, that can pass down through the system. That's my speculation. I would love to hear yours. Um, so PCB-126 was what was found in the diapers and this is known in rat populations or mouse po in rat populations to impact the cardiovascular health of female rats. The next one was DLPCB, which is a dioxin-like PCB, and I'm going to lump this in with the other two, with the next two, because the impacts of how this works is similar. So DLPCB, dioxin, and furan are three chemicals that behave and act kind of similar, and when you research them, like CDC and Environment Canada, just lump them all onto the same page. So this is part of the dirty dozen chemicals that is a persistent organic pollutant. It is a byproduct of bleaching paper pulp, and, um, and in the manufacturer... So it's a byproduct of bleaching paper. So that means when you buy a white, that's why white di diapers, that's how your diaper got white, it's how your toilet paper gets white, it's how everything gets white. So the process of bleaching leads to dioxins, leads to furons and DLPCBs is my understanding. And it is known to have long-term reproductive issues in children who have had exposure and there's a casual link to diabetes as well. This dioxin has a half-life of 7 to 11 years and is stored in the fat in our bodies. If a child is exposed to it, it's going to be at full capacity for 7 to 11 years before. The reason that dioxins and furans are really hazardous to our health is because they have a really high half-life and they're stored in the fat of our body. So our body just will cling on to these chemicals and not really let go of them. Furans also have the similar chemical structure to dioxin and is part of the pulp production process. And it's also linked to skin disorders, liver problems, re being stored in our fat, immune system problems, and perhaps cancer. Awesome, right? Basically reading through all of these chemicals and learning about them, because this is honestly the first time that I learned about them was this weekend. I have learned that if and when I do buy disposable diapers for my children, which we will probably be using disposable diapers when I have my foot surgery, if Anna's not potty trained, is I will definitely be choosing a diaper that is chlorine free, fragrance free, and as crunchy as I can get. The study in France didn't tell us what brands they tested, they just said that the majority of these brands had these chemicals in them. So we don't know what is what, but these chemicals that they did find, we can make kind of draw a conclusion that, yeah. We also, these diapers were in the French marketplace and there's no, we can't say that this applies to the United States, 
But looking at the chemicals that they did discover, looking at the American diapers and the Canadian diapers on the marketplace, I think that we can see how they might be linked. No? I can. Link. And some of the research that I was reading in Mice and Rats showed that the exposure to these chemicals didn't just stop with me, but was passed down to my children. If I had been disposable diapered, and even though I cloth diaper my children, my children are still potentially at risk for the health impacts of the chemicals that I could have been exposed to in a disposable diaper situation. And that's what's most scary about these chemicals is that there is very limited research and the research on animals that there is, is generational. But that doesn't say that cloth diapering is the best choice because cloth diapering also exposes yourself to chemicals. When we use non-organic non cloth diapers, like non-organic cottons, there could be trace amounts of herbicides and fertilizers left in that cotton after the processing. There could be. We don't, we don't really know and I tried to do some research and honestly it was all mixed. When we how we choose to wash our diapers also leaves behind fragrances and chemicals. If you're using a mainstream detergent like I do, Tide, it could be damaging. It, there could be chemical exposure there. So there's no clear-cut way to really answer this question besides to have this conversation, share with you what I know about chemicals, what I learned about chemicals, for you to do your own research, feel free to come back to me about it. I am feeling very scared. That's not the right word. I'm feeling, <sighs> you remember like, we all thought tobacco was amazing and tobacco was marketed like crazy. And over the last 50 years, the marketing of disposable diapers is intense. And to think that we are in the same situation right now is that's how I relate this. Right now, I look at disposable diaper rings just like a tobacco manufacturer. They are, yeah. And this is just the first whistleblowing. This isn't even the first whistleblowing. I think people have generally been skeptical of disposable products if you're conscious and you're aware. That's why the South Korea study happened was there were murmurings in the general population that feminine hygiene products might be impacting human health and female reproduction systems and that's why South Korea went forward and did that study and my feelings from that study was that the chemicals were present but they didn't feel they were to impact health and that statement, they didn't feel it would impact health. What does that mean? And does that just mean for a normal person it won't impact health? And part of the reason that we won't ever really know is because how do you control for disposable diapers in a population? Like how we know that because this entire population was disposable diaper that, that our reproduction system is struggling? We can kind of draw that link but it's not like smoking where we immediately see lung problems. So I think it will take us a long time to fully understand and disposal diaper companies are probably never gonna be completely honest with us as consumers of cloth diapers because I'm talking to a cloth diaper audience on this channel. We can make choices that can help reduce our exposure to the unknown. We can purchase diapers that have compliancy certificates. We can purchase diapers that show us and are completely transparent with us about their manufacturing process. And we can choose detergents that do the same thing. And we can continue to move forward knowing what we know and making better decisions. And I look back at my cloth diapering time with guilt. I don't feel comfortable with the fact that I've used Tide for three years. I really don't. 
and if you are watching this and you're thinking about getting started with cloth diapering and you're thinking about starting with like a crunchy eco-friendly detergent I would really recommend that the cloth diapering system you look at is something like flats or prefolds or organic fibers or bamboo even or hemp because these have potential for less toxins and if you choose something like a flat or a prefold they're gonna wash up easier for you and if you're switching to a more natural detergent that is free of fragrances and chemicals you will probably have a better wash experience and if you have a better wash experience I believe you'll have a better cloth diaper experience so that so that's my advice if you're watching this and you're like, and now I need to get started cloth diapering, is if you are committed to being chemical free, that's not a right word, if you're committed to reducing your exposure to dangerous chemicals and fragrances, choose a cloth diapering system that's easy. Don't choose microfiber and don't choose complex inserts. Choose simple two to three layer prefolds, flats, rectangular inserts, or regular inserts for your wash experience. It's going to be so much easier. I kind of think that I've really talked about everything that I know about this topic. If you've been digging into this topic too, feel free to have the conversation below. I take this French study as a reflection of all disposable diapers. I know it's only disposable diapers in the French marketplace, but I don't Based on the limited information that we know about American and Canadian disposable diaper products, I don't feel confident to say that American and Canadian cloth diaper products are safer and we're just being told they're safe because there is a lack of research into all of these chemicals and human health and I'm a skeptic right now. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this situation. If you disagree or agree, let's have a conversation about this because that's what's important is talking about this talking about how fragrances, how chemicals impact our health and what moves we need to take to protect our family. Because what's scary is that the choices that I'm making for my daughter could impact my grandchildren and my great grandchildren. And the choices that I made, my mom made for me are impacting Anna. This was a really long video. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, you are a superstar and I hope you subscribe to this channel and let me know what other topics you want to talk about and if you are another YouTuber I would love to hear you talk about the things that you're passionate about and the new and current events happening around the world. So thank you. Bye.